Hello everyone, welcome to this video about some Antoine Royer concepts. I'm right now in a very small hotel room in San Francisco on my way to Portland um, where I will host two workshops and private lessons and I will be there in two days from now that will be the 6th of September and uh, if you want to sign up for those if you're in the neighborhood of Portland then contact Tracy Kim and you will see his info right now on the screen and then I will see you there if you're there of course and then after that I will be in Vancouver and I have one day I can teach some private lessons that will be the 9th of September if you want to meet me for a private lesson you can always contact me uh, through I think the easiest way is, pro is probably through Facebook Messenger if you're connected to me on Facebook otherwise you can always send me a mail to the email address that is currently on the screen. And uh, so what I will be talking about during the workshops in Portland is technique and concepts for improvisation. And in that, with that in mind, I want to share with you some concepts that I learned from transcribing Antoine Boyer solos. And I just spent a couple of days with Antoine during the wonderful Django Fest Mill Valley Festival. And uh, we were talking about his approach to improvising, and it's not so much based on phrases, licks, uh, but more on concepts. And the way he derives those concepts might be from transcribing, right? He could transcribe a solo and then look at what's happening there, and then look at the concept and make up his own lines with those concepts. So I want to present to you two lines that I transcribed from, from Anton Boyer. I adapted them a little bit. Uh, so that we can play them in, in several keys, because the way that Antoine plays is very horizontal on the neck, uh, which shows his uh, enormous knowledge of the fretboard. And that's great if you're a genius, but for the non-geniuses among us like me, it would be nice to have it more vertical on the fretboard, so we can play it in several keys. So I adapted the lines a little bit, but the concepts are still there, and that's what's the most important thing. So the first line of Anton Boyer is a 2-5 uh, a in G, or they are both 2-5s, sorry, in the key of D, but they are very different. So the first line just uses basically the G major scale. And it just shows you that you can make good music with only one scale, but of course you need to find great lines. So slowly, and you will see the tap on the screen right now, the line sounds like this. So it's a 2 5 one in D, E minor, to A7, to G, uh, to D. So, one. There were, was one bar in E minor 7, one bar A7, one bar D6. So the line sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. from the D major scale except for then you get uh, what we call an enclosure where you enclose or circle around a certain note and in this case uh, around the around the B the 6 of D so this phrase ends on the 6 then that is an, a beautiful note to end a phrase on it, especially very gypsy just like to end on the 6 of the major chord but all the other notes are from the D major scale so what makes it so appealing is not the notes per se, but it is the way that the line moves. It's mostly downwards, but there's an embellishment. And just when you think, oh, this is just a skill, the line moves up. So let's play this line with a, a drum loop.
great sounding line. It's, so it starts for the way I think about it is that it starts on the third of the five chord. So the five chord is A7, so it starts on the C sharp. So if I want to play this line, let's say in uh, 2 5 1 in B flat, I have to start on the third of the five chord, which is F7, so I have to start on the A. So this is probably too low. Yeah, you, there's too many open strings, so then you have to play it up high. Ends on the G, the six of B flat. Um, so the concept that you can take from this that is that you can use only the major scale, but you have to find nice movements going both up and down within the major scale. Okay, so the second phrase is a much more harmonically interesting phrase. Again, it's two five one in D, and slowly it sounds like this: one, two, three. Four, one. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. So the interesting part is here. So that's just, it's just a, a D flat major triad with a 9 in there, the E flat. But the main idea is this, this D flat major triad. So he plays that on A7. So you could analyze that vertically, like, okay, what are those notes on A7? But the concept here is not that. The concept is playing D diminished as a retardation sound for D. So he's not thinking E minor, A7, D. He's thinking E minor, D diminished, D. So if you think D diminished, the scale that goes with that would be the D diminished scale. And that's an octatonic scale. And in that side, that scale, there is this chord. If you look at the notes in the scale, you can form this chord, which would be C, C sharp 7, sharp 9. Which, and you can move that chord up 3 frets, because the scale is uh, symmetric. But that's not important for now. Just know that this chord is in that side that scale. So you could, if you think about D diminished or D, the D diminished scale, you can play all the lines that fit over. D flat seven sharp nine, which of course is also a D flat triad. So the line itself is very nice, but you could make other lines um, using this principle, right? And then you resolve to D. Um, that's the concept, uh, which you can use in many places, not only two fives. You could use it anytime you encounter one, even if there's not a two five before it, right? You could use maybe start a song even just playing this sound, resolving to the one. And if you don't want to spend the time creating your own lines, you could just take this line. It's a great line. So let's play the line with uh, the backing track. So at the end there, I played another line, but using the same principle, playing D flat major over the A7. So you don't have to play the D flat major over the A7 and then resolve at the moment the D comes. You can resolve a little bit later, as long as you resolve somewhere inside that D chord. Uh, but as always, right, you could learn a concept, that's great, or you could just learn the lines, get the line inside your ears, and maybe a little bit later, once you get used to the sound, you can make your own lines. But the important thing to realize is that um, from every line that you learn, even on my channel, if it's just a lick, like a bebop lick or any lick, you could also 
try to extract the concepts and come up with their own lines. And it might even happen automatically if you, uh, if you play that lick many times, you might start to experiment with it and come up with your own lines based on that line, which basically means that you're basing your line on the concept within the previous line. And that's the way that Antoine improvises. And that's why I always uh, solos sound very fresh and creative because he's not thinking about licks, but about concepts. Anyway, th something to think about, and uh, I hope to see some of you during the coming workshops. And if not, then please um, watch the videos on my channel, subscribe, like it, share it, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye.